for the last two years. I'm also very pleased to see many friends this time in person, and I would like to thank all of those who have joined us today. As, I, as you know, Azaka's main objective is to raise the profile of Africa within the diplomatic community and beyond through organizing various activities and facilitating charity events. You will appreciate that this get together takes place less than a week after the end of a major event that kept most of our high commissions and the embassies busy in assisting their leaders and delegations in order to ensure an optimal participation in the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP26, in Glasgow. So we thought it would be a good opportunity to reflect on the outcome of this major conference and what it means for us Africans as our countries are clearly among those most affected and vulnerable to climate change, which represents an increasingly serious threat for the African continent. I don't see a person in a better position today to speak about the issue of climate change than my dear sister Estelle, a valued member of our Azaka family. Estelle, who actively took part in COP26, will provide us with first-hand information about the conference and her views as an expert on the outcome of the conference and the challenges ahead for the world and particularly the African continent in terms of adaptation and mitigation actions to limit global warming and its related effects. A few words about Esterine before she starts her talk. Mrs. Esterine Lissinger Potabon is the spouse of the Cameron High Commissioner to the UK and Ireland and is currently the Director of Program Innovation and Planning at the African Human Development Agency, NEPAD. She was previously Director of Program Implementation and Coordination at the NEPAD Planning and Coordinating Agency. Before her appointment as Director at the NEPAD Agency, Estelle was the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, Country Gizon, Officer for South Africa and the Senior Environment Advisor to the Nepal Secretariat. She has held previously several positions, including Assistant Lecturer in Law at the University of SOA, Yaoundé in Cameroon, Director of Policy and Strategy at WWF Central African Regional Program Office, Biodiversity and Nepal Program Officer with UNEP. Esterine has served on several panels and international steering committees for various projects. She has co-authored several publications related to climate change adaptation, environmental law, and development policy. She also received numerous international awards for her dedication and leadership towards the equality and empowerment of African women. I'm grateful to Esterine for having accepted to, to be our speaker today and to share her insight and expertise with us on the issue of climate change. I hope you will enjoy her, her talk and the lunch, and that you will be the lucky winner of our raffles today for this of a variety of lovely African products. Thank you for your attention. Esteri, over to you. Thanks, um, thanks, Madam President of Osaka, my dear sister Martha, and um, good afternoon, um, all of you. So I just feel really that that of all knows the invitation from attack and it's indeed um, an almost pleasure for me to um, give this little talk um, to um, this distinguished audience. Um, I will try not to be too long because I don't want to keep us from our lunch. Um, from the menu I see um, it looks very, very, very uh, appetizing. 
So, as Mara said, we just finished um, COP26. And um, the question why the focus on climate change? I think we should all ask that question because the last, for those of, those of you who are in the UK, I'm sure the past year has not had anything more than climate change, climate change, climate change. And um, the question, therefore, is why? Why is the um, international community paying so much attention to this issue? Uh, so since 1992, the global um, community coordinated by the United Nations system has realized with undoubtable scientific evidence based on various expert results from experts drawn across the globe um, that the climate is changing. And uh, looking at the audience, I'm trying to give a talk that is not technical. Uh, a talk that we cannot understand because I've started meetings before where um, it's been very scientific. And the idea is simply put, what is climate change? I think that's the question. Simply put, what is climate change? Simply the fact that the average temperature of the world is increasing. That's a short answer to a complex question. The world is warming up. Temperatures are increasing. Um, and why is it of concern to all of us? Why is it is not a good thing? You would think living in a country like the UK, where the weather is hot, you know, <laughs> you would want a little bit of temperature increase, um, but that temperature increase, uh, could be problematic. Um, Due to the increase in global temperatures, we have seen very clear impact. So it's not a question of maybe in the next one or two years we might see the consequences of this increase in temperature. We are already seeing them. We are seeing it here in the UK with lots of floods. We are seeing it in Africa. So people are facing serious coastal flooding as a result of increased climate change, which is causing the glaciers to melt, and so we have sea level rises. Coastal communities are disappearing, we are seeing that in front of our eyes, so this is not a question of, it's not a joke. We are seeing, people are facing severe droughts in Africa, is a huge problem, the, the, the Sahel, so West Africa, and the Horn of Africa, we have actually conflicts that are as a result of droughts. Um, Human-animal conflicts, people-to-people conflicts. Um, some of our participants, uh, our members here from their own countries, I'm sure, can tell us stories on the increase in drought. I'm looking at my dear friend, why, why and I know that in, in Kenya, there are serious um, questions of drought. In South Africa, where my office is, drought is really, really severe. So it's, it's not, a, not a joke. And what are the consequences of the severe drought? It affects our food system. You know, it affects the planting seasons, and the consequences of affecting planting seasons is people have shortage of food. Now, with shortage of food, we have issues of migration, people moving, and we have seen lots of Africans crossing the Mediterranean, putting the life at risk. And we ask ourselves why. So these are some of the consequences of um, as a result of climate change. We are also seeing people suffering from severe heat waves. And um, it's not a story that I have to tell you, but here in this country, many people do lose their lives as a result of heat waves. So the increase in temperature is resulting to all of this are um, very, very severe consequences. And lastly, of course, there's biodiversity loss um, as a result of the increase in temperature where you have insects. We know the important role that insects play in uh, pollination. Now, so some of them are disappearing. But when we start losing our biodiversity, it also has a severe impact on our livelihood. So for all of these reasons, we can understand why the international community has given this question a lot of attention. Um, so, 
COP26, of course, the name is Christy. COP is the conference of parties. The conference of parties is the members of the global community, the countries that have signed up to the convention on um, climate change. Uh, this is the 26th session that just held, and it was hosted by United Kingdom government in Glasgow. Now, the government of the UK had three objectives um, in hosting the conference. Um, they plan to do three things, or see as the outcome of this conference three things. One, to secure global net zero in temperatures by mid-century, so to keep the global temperatures to 1.5 degrees, should not be above that pre-industrial times. Um, the second one was to adapt to protect communities and natural habitats from the impact of climate change. And the third objective was to mobilize resources. So to deliver on the um, pledge made by developed countries in part, actually in Copenhagen, to mobilize at least 100 billion by 2020 climate change to support developing countries on adaptation and mitigation measures. So those were the objectives of the, set by the UK government and of course endorsed by the, the, all the member states that were participating in, in Glasgow. If one, those who have been following the news and um, to get an assessment on the outcome of the glass pool. They are, you can see the, the glass as either half full or half empty. But I guess the point is, is a mixed result. The, there was some positive um, outcomes, and there were some that areas that um, the general opinion is that it could have been better. And um, the outcome document of Glasgow, which is called the Glasgow Climate Pact. Um, one could say has kept alive the um, the views or, or, or the decisions that were made in Paris to keep global temperatures from rising below 1.5 degrees. We are not there yet, but member states have committed to take measures in their countries to be able to cut down the increase in global temperatures. Uh, that's a good thing. At least there's a positive intention to do it. Now, I think pressure needs to be made to make sure that this action actually happens. Um, on the positive um, uh, side as well, the actual document, the outcome document of Glasgow, mentioned fossil fuel for the first time. Um, we have gone to many communities, and I've read many documents, and we all know that fossil fuel is one of the principal culprits for increased temperatures because of climate change, but never before in the outcome documents of all these negotiations. So we've had 25 of them that they have been specific mention of fossil fuel in the outcome documents. So, the fact that that's been mentioned means that particular attention is being given to that and, and measures need to be taken to address it. Now, this is an association of African, um, the wives of high commissioners from Africa. So I, I would like to look at the decision of Glasgow from an African perspective. First, of course, the global perspective and um, the situation of the West is very different from the situation of developing countries and in particular African countries. And as most of you would have heard, Africa is not responsible for climate change. Mm -hmm. But we are facing the brunt of it. The reality on the ground is that our local communities are facing severe consequences of a situation that we did not cause. But we have to participate in measures that will help to reduce the uh, increase in temperatures. So as, as Maha said, um, almost two weeks now, the time goes so fast. Um, 
some of us were in Glasgow. I think all my sisters here had to go in Glasgow to support their husbands to welcome their heads of state. And I was there myself, um, supporting my own husband, but also as a technical person participating in this mission. So it was quite um, hectic for all of us. So we had about 25 African leaders who spoke in Glasgow to demand for climate justice. And I'm, I'm choosing my word carefully, uh, climate justice, um, because this is what it is. If you, you're not responsible for causing it, so they have to be um, compensation in various ways to support these African countries that are not principally responsible for um, climate change. And for climate justice, it means, of course, addressing the issues of climate finance, providing funding for adaptation. So because of the rising temperatures, the, the vulnerability that this causes, our farmers, our fishermen, our infrastructures, all of these things, measures have to be taken for these communities to adapt to the changes that are being caused by climate change. Um, to support drastic costs in emissions. So even though we are not responsible and our priority as Africans are is adaptation. We also have to participate in the transition. And so meaning cutting our emissions. But cutting emissions means we need technology, we need capacity, mm -hmm. we need finance. Yep. So participation from the developed countries to provide technology that can lead to cleaner use of say energy, production of energy, cleaner use of coal. Um, is critical for the transition of African countries. Um, and of course, <laughs> there was a feeling that the developed countries were backtracking on the pledge of the 100 billion that they had promised to give to developing countries by 2020. We, as Africans, in that uh, in the call, called for an increase not only of this promise but going beyond this 2020 uh, uh, pledge of 100 billion look beyond the next 50 years and see what is required um, for africans to adapt to climate change and to go to a transition um, of the green economy so the african negotiations are calling for 1.3 trillion US dollars to be able to cope um, with climate change adaptation. There's one area that is particularly of concern to Africans and it's called loss and damage. So it's not adaptation. Adaptation is, is happening and you can see what you can do through technology to adapt. But there are losses that have already happened. Mm -hmm. Communities have already disappeared. Yep. So for this, they are calling for compensation. So it's additional money to the money that they are requesting for adaptation. Mm -hmm. And um, up till now, there have not been a serious discussion on the issue of loss and damage. But I think on a positive note, this time around, this was discussed. And even though the decision is not as strong as we would have loved to see, um, uh, a, 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 a decision was made to further discuss the issue. So one could say it's more talk, but at least it's an opportunity to continue to have that conversation and for Africa to make its case that in addition to adaptation money, we do need support to loss and damage. So yeah. effects that are already, they have already happened. Communities have already disappeared. Farmers have already lost their crops, mm -hmm. pushing them into more poverty. Women have to walk and trade miles and miles and miles to look for fire. You know, so these are not um, things that you are thinking will happen in future. They are happening and they have happened. So they have to be compensation for, for these things uh, and to support these communities to, to have other alternatives. Um, but as I said earlier, these are positions from an African perspective, but again, um, all is not lost. Um, there is room for continuous conversation. And from Glasgow, there was also some significant commitment in terms of partnership pledges to certain regions. For instance, um, the Congo Basin forest area did receive 
um, a significant um, amount of resources from the UK government of about 1.5 billion to protect the Congo Basin Forest. And as we know, the Congo Basin Forest is a thing that captures carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. which is really because of um, the emissions that we're trying to reduce. Um, so after COP, what happens now? Of course, one meeting ends. Those of you who have followed these global processes, the conversation is already starting to let for the next COP to take place. And the next COP will be on African soil. It will be in Egypt. Wow. So, well done. Yes, in Sharman. That's lovely. So, this is our moment to do advocacy. Yeah, to do advocacy. And um, the one important um, decision from, from, from Glasgow is that all the parties to the convention will report on the international determinant. So their action plan to reduce their emissions. Initially in Paris, it was said every five years they will report. But I think it's a good thing from Glasgow, they have to do it now every year. So next year they have to come with a more ambitious action plan on the measures that they will put to reduce um, their emissions. So I think that um, as Africans, of course, we have to continue to make a big case on adaptation because this is what is really important for the continent. We are already suffering impact. We we are not most of our countries are not industrialized nations, so their emission is still not that high. Mm -hmm. yeah, where mitigation will be the principal areas of action. For us, adaptation is the principal area of action, and so we need to push to get technology to support us to get capacity to get our farmers, our fishermen, our engineers to be able to design our infrastructures that are, are adaptable to uh, increase climate uh, temperatures. Um, also, Egypt will be a place where we want our indigenous communities, our local communities, our councils, where all these things are played out our women to have their voices heard. Yeah. So we need to be able to help to organize these groups so that through us that have access to this platform, we can represent um, their voices. And of course, to my sisters um, of Asaka, um, we can also nudge our husbands to make sure that these messages are communicated to the right quarters um, here, um, here in, in the UK and other platforms such as the Commonwealth that we all participate in to make such strong messages. And of course, our friends, like my sister from Pakistan who is here, um, hearing this message and the important this is for Africa to, 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 to help us to make these messages heard. Um, so, will be organizing ourselves. Uh, but lastly, these are things that we need to do as African, as governments, as representative in this panel, but also as individuals, we do have responsibility. So I guess the question is for each of us here, what can we do as individuals to help to address the issues of climate change and to cut down uh, the emissions cost? I feel a bit guilty because I've got that for a stick. I, I do understand that one of the measures that we might have to take in terms of mitigation is to reduce how much beef we eat. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I hear a lot of people say that's not going to happen. <laughs> but we can also lock down our taps. We can not let water run. We can help to make sure that there's no deforestation. Uh, we can help to provide alternatives to um, communities that need alternative measures for their livelihoods. Um, and, and so much. So my appeal is for us to reflect as individuals on the personal actions that we can take to support um, this global warming phenomenon. Thank you very much.
It's absolutely wonderful here to do this. This is uh, the Association of Spouses of African Thank you so much to everybody who is joining in. Thank you so much, Reverend Agui, for joining in. Uh, precious, uh, come, uh, uh, I want to appreciate uh, Precious Akam Kumza. Lovely to see you. Wairegi, all the way from Kenya, Asante Sana, Bishop Mehemehe. Please help me share this video. This is um, mainly, uh, I've been invited here, and uh, this event is being hosted by the Association of Spouses of African High Commissioners and Ambassadors, and these are the wives of um, the High Commissioners, so they are, of course, talking about issues about climate issues. I'm absolutely delighted to be amongst them because um, it means that I, you can see the beautiful work that they, they, they do. They're talking about how they keep their their husbands um, busy. And you know, many a times women have got a lot of responsibility because they have to be the gatekeepers of their husbands as well. So that is absolutely amazing to be amongst all these um, African um, spouses. And uh, yes, we have visitors, other spouses from other countries. Um, I'm delighted to be amongst them. Uh, thank you so much for the invite. Um, blessed to be amongst you. Uh, we've got um, um, Reverend, we've got um, the High Commissioner's um, uh, wife, Bola, right in front of me here. Uh, that is Bola, a High Commissioner's um, wife uh, for Nigeria. She's right in front of me, as you can see. So, reporting here to you, my name is Juliet Mahapil, for those who don't know me as well. I'm um, the African Wonder Woman, yes, I'm the African Wonder Woman, Juliet Mahapil. And I am from Kenya. I am representing, I'm here as well. I love being Kenyan, so I came to support the High Commissioner's wife, um, um, who is called Wife Egeni. So I'm here just, just because of her. I love her to be a beautiful warm person. What a beautiful warm welcome. She gave me such a beautiful warm welcome. I'm absolutely delighted to have met her. We always speak, um, but we haven't physically met because of um, uh, the long duration of our issues with COVID-19. But today, meeting her in person, what a warm person. I'm absolutely amazed just to be here supporting the program. Thank you so much um, to also the High Commissioner, His Excellency, um, uh, our High Commissioner uh, of UK, Kenyan High Commissioner, um, His Excellency Manoa, but on behalf of um, the women down here. I'm absolutely blessed. Um, I'm a community uh, transformer, social impactor. So, thank you so much for the invite. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Tarela, for being here. Susan Kumba, thank you so much. Um, Tarela, I can also see Boykanyu. We've met a few community leaders over here. We are always at it and we love being here. Um, thank you. Thank you, Lulu. Being the treasurer, I've met their, um, their, their chairperson. Amazing group to be around. Get Root, lovely to see, um, from Malawi. I'm surprised. Yes, uh, Get Root is there. Uh, uh, her head uh, Get Root is here as well, Reverend. So I just uh, met her. She met me as I was walking in. Yes, so we're all here. Thank you. Good night, good day, good evening, good afternoon, good morning from whichever part of the world you're watching me from. I'm live here right now in London um, and it's a blessing to just think that we're talking about climate issues here I'm really really happy you know how much passionate I am about climate issues can I also say uh, can I also uh, mention Dr. Matsanga for inviting me personally for the pre-conference of um, the COP26 Councillor Piper as well thank you so much for the work that you're doing and many many other councillors I just want to take this opportunity to say Thank you, Glasgow. Thank you, UK, for the work that you've done. And um, you've just 
heard from the, uh, the, the wife of um, the High Commissioner from Cameroon. She was just giving us her take. Yes, thank you. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Any questions, please put the questions over here. You want to see Tarela? Huh? Tarela is here. <laughs> Hello, this is Harela Gandhi here. Yeah. Are you happy? I am happy. I'm having fun. Yeah. I'm learning more about the climate change. Yeah. Yeah. We are here with the High Commission, oh, the High Commission, the High Commission, and just um, talking about the climate change, how we can bring change to that, and in our community. Yeah. yeah. And we are working what, 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 what's the importance? Why do you think it's important to look after the planet? Oh, it is very important. A lot of things are changing. Yes. And if we do not take action now, yeah. And do you think um, we are doing enough here as diasporians? What do you think we diasporians can be doing? We are not. We should go back to, the, to our roots. To our roots. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. And um, how can we involve persons with disability in issues of climate issues? We should, we should uh, listen to them. We should, uh, Give them what they need yeah. from the ground. From the ground, use less technology. Yeah. I think, yeah. and uh, involve them more. Involve them more. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. You're hearing from one of our wonderful uh, community leaders. She loves. Um, I love to invest in uh, what women are doing and to pass the message over to um, about climate issues. It's all part of us. We need to be. Uh, the champions, it's really lovely to be amongst the, uh, the wives because when the wives are empowered, they are able to, when we invest on the wives of the high commissioners, we are actually also able to bring forward um, their voices as well. So I love being here on behalf of my community as well. I love you all. Juliet Mahapila, the one and only Juliet Mahapila. And don't forget, share, share, share. Don't forget to share this video. Share, share. Donald Igwebu has joined us. <laughs> so today we've got Nigeria, Malawi, Cameroon, Kenya. We've got Botswana. <laughs> we've got Venezuela. We've got Cape de Cape Portugal, eh? Cameroon, Ghana. We've got Pakistan. Yes. We've got Malaysia. Yes. Venezuela. Yes. We've got, uh, let me just quickly show you around. Yes, all of here. We are all here from different countries. Climate issues cannot be fought alone. We are all here. Yes, Botswana, you can see. Yes, um, Cape de Ver Yeah, here. Here, you can see. Yeah, thank you. Yes. All my friends, I'm meeting so many of my friends. Let me go because I also need to eat. Bye. Ciao. See you later.